Yes! What is up everyone? And with a big summer of international tournaments coming up, and after a year of not doing anything like this on my channel, I said to myself, f*** it, let's do another preview. So with the start of the Euros almost upon us, and just to say it out loud, I'm filming this two weeks before the opening game between Germany and Scotland, so if there are any significant injuries between now and then, it's not my fault! All right, let's get after it. By starting with the details, the 17th edition of this tournament kicks off on Friday, June 14th at the Allianz Arena in Munich and ends on Sunday, July 14th in the Olympiastadion in Berlin. There are 24 countries competing in 10 different cities around Germany, and those 24 countries will be split into six groups of four. From there, the top two in each group will advance, along with the four best third place teams to make up the round of 16, which is part of why I think this tournament is super intriguing. The battle for those third place spots is going to be fierce, and it could also give one of the favorites a chance to slip up and still make it to the knockout rounds, like Portugal in 2016. If you remember, they finished third in their group behind Hungary and Iceland, and then went on to win it all, even though Cristiano Ronaldo got hurt early on in the final, which rumor has it is because he had a moth on his face. And apparently Messi's people sent it? Maybe he did? I don't know. We'll never know! And like any other human out there, if you bring up Ronaldo, yeah, I gotta bring up Messi. Those are the rules. Anyway, let's start with Group A, where we have the host Germany alongside Scotland, Hungary, and Switzerland. Now, if I'm just doing the eye test and looking at the rosters, this looks like a pretty straightforward group for Germany to win, but let's dig a little bit deeper. Because the three-time champions of this competition, the Germans, the Germans, the Roberto, <laughs> who I still consider to be one of the superpowers of the beautiful game, have, as of late, fallen below their incredibly high standards by getting knocked out in both the 2018 and 2022 World Cups at the group stage, and also they got eliminated at Euro 2020 in the round of 16. So they're on a little bit of a down slope. So what have they done to fix it? They brought in a 36-year-old manager to right the ship. Yeah, play the kids, let the kids coach, whatever. And he's doing that by calling in a player who's about the same age as him and who already retired from the German national team, which all feels a little desperate until you realize that that old player is the legend Tony Kroos, who could prove to be a vital piece in the German midfields. And then if you add that type of experience with some extremely talented youngsters like Jamal Musiala and Florian Wirtz, and hopefully a number nine that can be consistently dangerous, Zé Germans could be in line to win the trophy for a record fourth time, and their first since 1996, which would break their deadlock with Spain, who also have won three. As for the rest of the group, Hungary were tremendous in qualifying, not losing any of their eight games. They finished second in the top Nations League group, which included England, Italy, and Germany, and they're led by a stud in Dominic Zavislai, and, I should add this, they're currently on a 14-game unbeaten streak. Then with Scotland, they only lost once in their group, which is away to Spain, which is not an easy fixture, but they did beat Spain at home 2-0, which demonstrates the quality that they have in their team. And they outlasted the Erling Haaland and Martin Odegaard-led Norway in some crazy games, including two goals in the last five minutes to beat Norway 2-1 in Norway. So the Scots are going to be tough to beat. And then with the Swiss, like everyone else in the group, they're also going to be tough to beat. However, for me, they weren't that great in qualifying. Four wins, five draws, and one loss to finish second to Romania. Also, their defense conceded the most goals of any automatic qualifier, and their top scorer, Burnley's Ziki Amduani, scored only three goals. So I'm a little worried on both sides of the field because it feels like they might have some issues. So if you take this into account and Scotland's history working against them, which is them being in eight World Cups and three Euros and never making it out of the group stages, I got Germany in first, Hungary in second, Switzerland in third, and Scotland in fourth. In group B, this feels like the group of death and then Albania because it's Spain, Croatia, and defending champs Italy who, for whatever reason, can't qualify for the last two World Cups but can win this competition. And then, as I mentioned, Albania. So out of respect for the current kings of the Euros, let's start with Italy, who won it with Roberto Mancini as their manager, but now have Luciano Spalletti, who took the job three months after helping Napoli win their first Serie A title in over 30 years. And I'm pretty sure the minimum that was expected out of him was to qualify for this tournament, and he barely achieved that. I'm trying to put up air quotes. They finished runner-up to England, having lost both home and away to the Three Lions, but edged Ukraine on the first tiebreaker to clinch the automatic spot to Germany. After the 0-0 draw with Ukraine at home on the last match day, which qualified the defending champs for Euro 2024 in the most Italian way possible, Spalletti said, 
I came here to qualify, not to find excuses if we didn't. And the real work starts now. First, I love this guy. He doesn't give a f about your feelings or your opinions. Second, all that work will be for nothing if they can't find a number nine to step up and score some goals unless they want to zero zero their way to the final, which I wouldn't put past them. And now let's talk a little Spain, who lost only once in qualifying 2-0 at Scotland in the second game of eight, but then they went on to win every other match the rest of the way and clinched qualification with two games to spare as they finished with seven wins and one loss, while impressively scoring 25 goals from 12 different goal scorers, by the way, and conceding only five. So the team clearly has something special about them. However, have you seen their preliminary roster, especially on defense? Nacho? Laporte? Jesus Navas, Carvajal, what is this? The 2016 Euros? Ultimately, I like the talent on their squad and the mix of young and old from 38-year-old Navas to 16-year-old Lamine Lamal. But the challenge for this coach, Luis De La Fuente, will be in finding the right balance and chemistry between the youth and experience, which won't be easy in the group of death, and then Albania. And speaking of Albania, I'm just giving them a hard time because after losing to Poland in its opening game, they went undefeated the rest of the way to win Group E, which is the first time in their history that they have won the qualifying group for a major tournament. However, Albania also set another distinction and not in a good way by scoring the fewest goals of any Euro team to win their group. Though in fairness, they have the second best defense only behind France. So they're going to be tough to break down. Just like the last team in Group B, Croatia, who are like the Goonies of the international game. They never say die. Runners up at the 2018 World Cup, semi-finalists in 2022. You think it would be straightforward for the Croatians to qualify for the Euros, but they ended up finishing in second behind Turkey. However, this whole team of itches with Luka Modric as my favorites will leave you with stitches if you don't believe in the togetherness that their coach Zlatko Dalic has preached since he took over in 2017. If you don't believe in the itches, you get stitches. You hit like for the great content, you hit subscribe for the awesome jokes. Oh my god, this is such a tough group to pick. And then Albania, all right, okay. I'm gonna go with Croatia in first. That sounds wild. Italy in second, Spain in third, and then Albania. But I think each of the top three teams will go through to the round of 16. So don't yell at me if you're not happy with the order. All right, now let's dive into Group C, which is housing the three Lions of England, the Boys of Slovenia, the Eagles of Serbia, and the Danish Dynamite of Denmark, which is where my dad's family is from, right outside of Aarhus, if you know where that is. So let's begin with my Scandinavian blood. We are red, we are white, we are Danish Dynamite. We are red, we are white, we are Danish Dynamite. Sorry, I had to get that out. Unfortunately, we didn't have the greatest qualifying campaign despite winning our group, and that's because we lost more games and conceded the most goals of any other group winner. So what does that mean for this tournament? Especially because we finished last in our group in the last major tournament in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. I have no idea, but I think playing Slovenia first, who was in our qualifying group and who we didn't lose to, it was a win and a draw. That should be a really nice way to ease into this competition. A familiar face, as it were. And because I just threw a huge amount of shade on Slovenia, let's talk about them next. Because in fairness, they actually tied with Denmark on points in qualifying, but lost out on the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. So they clearly got some quality, like 20-year-old number nine, Benjamin Sheshko, who might be on the move from RB Leipzig to Arsenal this summer. Keep your eye out for that. And they have the beast Jan Oblak in goal. But my issue is what version of them is going to show up? Will it be the team that tied Malta 2-2 in their first friendly in March? or the one that beat Portugal 2-0 in their second friendly in March. It's kind of like Denmark, honestly. It's hard to say how they're gonna perform. And actually, I feel the same way about Serbia. They have a ton of talent as evidenced by their front three of Dusan Vlahovic, Alexander Micevic, and Dusan Tadic, but they didn't qualify for the Euros in 2020, and they only finished second in their qualifying group to Hungary this time around with 14 points, which along with Italy, is the fewest of any team that automatically got into this tournament. And then you add in their friendlies in March, a 4-0 loss to Russia, even though there was, an early red card in that game, and a 1-0 win over Cyprus, it's not really inspiring too much confidence, which is a really long way of me saying that this is England's group to lose. And if you're listening to the bookies, it's England's tournament to lose too, since they are the odds-on favorite to win it all. It's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming, football's coming home, it's coming home. It's coming. Listen, I'm just gonna say it because it's also written on my board. It's not coming home. And that's because the captain and all-time leading goal scorer of the three lines, Mr. Harry Kane, is 
cursed. The dude moved to Bayern Munich from Tottenham this past summer, which everyone thought would guarantee him winning at least one trophy because Bayern usually win multiple trophies every single season and he won zero. And so now what? We all think it's going to be turned around for him on the international stage because of the positive momentum and energy of the newly named star boy of La Liga and Real Madrid, Jude Bellingham? It is not. But they will win this group. Serbia will get second, Denmark third, and Slovenia fourth. All right, now let's talk some shop about Group D, which I consider to be kind of the other group of death, minus the powerhouse Albania, of course. And it is France, Netherlands, Poland, and Austria. And I'm gonna go from least likely to most likely, which means I'm looking at Poland first because they finished third in their qualifying group behind Albania. Go on, Albania! And Czech Republic finished ahead of them as well to go into a playoff to qualify. I'm talking about Poland here, which they won, the first one at least, beating Estonia 5-1, and they, of course, won the second one to book their ticket. They beat Wales in Wales and penalties. So I appreciate their resourcefulness to still find a way but I think they're just an average team, especially with some of their stars on the wrong side of 30 years old, which is a long way of me saying that they're gonna finish in fourth. Then in third, I'm going with Austria, if only because it will trigger a lot of Manchester United fans to see Austria manager and one of their former managers, Ralph Rangnick, have success. I know United fans don't really care for that guy. For those that don't know though, Rangnick is famous for his role as director of football in building RB Leipzig from a regional tier club into a Bundesliga perennial contender from 2012 to 2020. And maybe even more famously, he is known as the godfather of gegenpressing, which at its simplest level is pressing high up the field immediately to win the ball back once it's lost. However, after leaving his role with Red Bull in 2020, Rangnick's reputation as an innovative, successful coach was dented slightly during his short stints of five months with Lokomotiv Moscow. And following that, it may be dented even more, his six months with United. So the big questions are as such, can he translate these methods into a national team? Is he around the team enough to truly implement this playing style? Do they have enough time together to pull it off? I'm super curious to see if that can happen. And finally, it's the two heavyweights of this group, France and the Netherlands, who also just happen to be the heavyweights of their qualifying group too, where France finished in first by beating the Dutch twice, which forced Hup Holland Hup to settle for second. And you know what? As I think about this a little bit more as it settles into my frontal lobe, this shouldn't be allowed. If you share a qualifying group, you shouldn't have to play the same team again in the group stages. That's just dumb. Yeah, I said it, dumb. Anyway, here's really what's at stake for these two teams. If you win this group and everything goes as it should, you'll most likely face Belgium in the quarterfinals and England in the semis. If you get second, you'll most likely face Portugal in the quarterfinals and some combination of Germany, Spain, Italy, Croatia in the semis. So pick your poison, I guess. Also, I could do a more detailed background of these teams, but I'm gonna save it for my knockout round preview instead. So on to Group E we go, which includes Belgium, Slovakia, Ukraine, and Romania. And my initial instinct is that if Belgium self-implode again like they did in Qatar at the World Cup, this group could get really interesting really fast, which I think is still a possibility because I'm not sold on their 38-year-old manager, Domenico Tedesco. However, this feels like the last gasp of Belgium's golden generation of Kevin De Bruyne, Romelu Lukaku, and their old war horses like Axel Witzel and Jan Vertonghen. But maybe this new generation of Louis Appenda and Jeremy Doku, amongst many others, because they have a ton of talent coming through the ranks, can help them reach new heights or maybe they'll continue to underachieve, which seems to be Belgium's DNA as a national team. And now that I think about it, that's something similar to Morocco in the World Cup when Belgium crashed out of the group stages, where Slovakia, Ukraine, and Romania can take advantage of a top team not playing to their potential. But which of these three countries has the players and is in form? That's a big, big question. Slovakia lost to Austria 2-0 and drew 1-1 with Norway in the March friendlies and had trouble beating Liechtenstein and Luxembourg in qualifying. Yeah, you heard me right, Liechtenstein and Luxembourg. Ukraine finished third in qualifying behind England and Italy, which okay, that's fair. So they dropped into the playoff and beat Bosnia and Iceland in March to book their ticket to the big dance. So I like that momentum. Plus, they're gonna have the added emotional boost of playing for something bigger than themselves since this is Ukraine's first major tournament since the Russian invasion. And sometimes that extra emotion can lead you to great things. And then there's Romania, who went undefeated in qualifying. Six wins and four draws to win their group over Switzerland, but in their March friendlies, they drew 1-1 with Northern Ireland and then were down 3-0 to Colombia before scoring two goals late to make it a more respectable 3-2 loss. So if I take all this info into consideration and the pool of talent on all three squads, including the respective coaching staffs, I like Belgium in first and then Ukraine in second, Romania in third and Slovakia to finish in fourth. And finally, it's Group F, or as I like to call it, the group where Pinaldo gets all of his goals since Portugal, who 
if they play to their potential, and we could argue they have one of the most talented squads in the whole tournament, they can dunk on these other countries. And I mean this with nothing but the utmost respect for the other teams in this group, Turkey, Czech Republic, and Georgia. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna take deeper dives into the bigger teams and they get into the knockout rounds, which is just another way of me saying that Portugal are gonna finish in first. So the question is, who gets that all important second spot? Is it Turkey, who were one of my teams to watch ahead of the last Euros? I was like, oh yeah, Turkey are so good, they're gonna make a run to the semifinals. Listen, they lost all three of their games in the group and only scored one goal. I'm still bitter. And then, in recent times, back in March in the friendlies, they lost to Hungary 1-0, and then they lost to Austria 6-1. So they're not exactly making me super confident, despite the fact that they won their qualifying group over Croatia and Wales. I just get the sense that they're setting me up to break my heart again. Now as for Georgia, well, this is the first time they've ever qualified for a major tournament. They're the lowest FIFA ranked team in this competition, currently 77th in the world. They finished fourth in their qualifying group behind Spain, Scotland, and Norway. And they needed some good fortune to outlast Greece in penalties to win the playoff for one of the last spots of the Euro. So I'm just gonna file their chances in the just happy to be here category. But Czech Republic, this core of players got to the quarterfinals in the last Euros. Their stud striker Patrick Schick is back and healthy and full of confidence after helping Bayer Leverkusen win the Bundesliga for the first time in club history. And some interesting news for me, they were down a goal in both of their March friendlies and came back to win both. 2-1 against Norway and 2-1 against Armenia. And that's a sign of a team that knows how to deal with some adversity. And anytime you get into a major tournament, there's gonna to be a lot of adversity. So I'm curious to see how they're gonna play against Portugal in their opening game. That is going to reveal a lot. But regardless of that results, I like Portugal, as I mentioned, to finish in first. Czech Republic to edge out Turkey for second, which means Turkey will get third, but that might be good enough to get into the round of 16, we'll see. And Georgia, thank you for coming, but you are going to get fourth. And yes, I did it! I got to the finish line of this preview, so hit me up with your thoughts below, like give me your top two in each group so I can make fun of you later, or most likely, you're gonna be making fun of me and my picks. Also hit like and subscribe to motivate me to bring you even more videos moving forward, and I cannot wait for this tournament to start because it's gonna be awesome and the reaction video that we're gonna to make to laugh at all of us after that and then we're gonna have a Copa America preview so be on the lookout for that and some other videos because I like making videos and I love our community and I'm done talking, I've been doing a lot of talking and, and I need to go rest now. Later!